Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between. I ripped my mic off. <laughs> ah. And it's, it's worth noting that when I get up in the morning and I fire up my bench and start doing teardowns, I put my pants on one leg at a time. Difference being, I make gold records. That's one of the prettiest main gears I've ever seen in a real size. It, and again, it's it's main gears aren't a beauty contest, so let me make that perfectly clear. It's not like there's a beauty pageant and main gears are just walking down a catwalk. You know what I mean? Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today, we're going to be talking about the brand spanking new Pen Battle 3 DX. Here we have the 2500, and here's the 4000. And we're going to be going into the details on these reels. We're also going to be comparing it to the standard Battle 3. Now, before we get started, I'll just give you a, a quasi long term update. Uh, I've been fishing this reel since it came out, and when I haven't been fishing it, I handed it off to a couple of my buddies, some of which had some issues with the Pen Battle 2, which I also dubbed the Wind Knot Machine. If you want to throw Wind Knights, just buy yourself a Battle 2. And they now have faith in the Battle brand. Uh, you know, one of my buddies who <laughs> I'll never forget, he threw a Wind Knot for the fifth time on the trip, and he went ahead and just threw the rod and reel overboard. And uh, that was the last time he fished a pen product until I handed him this reel. And uh, flash forward before his next trip out, he went ahead and bought a spin fisher. Even still, not a battle, renewed faith in the brand. So that's cool to see. I have not experienced a single problem, same as what I was hoping and expecting and what I experienced out of the spin fisher. This is the six, this is the same 4,500. A little bit more capacity, same size body. Same as what you got here, the big difference being the Battle 3 DX steps it up, even goes above and beyond what you can get expect in the smaller, up to the 6500 size spin fisher with CNC brass, brass machine gearing versus the machined aluminum that you get in these two reels. So uh, I'm trying to figure out where we should start off. So you have the obvious. Uh, Penn is trying to go after the Abu Garcia Silver. No, I'm just kidding. They're going after the most popular reel, yeah, pretty much on the market, the, the Stratic and its silver uh, paint scheme. And I think they've done an excellent job just to guys, give you guys a close up in terms of aesthetics and cosmetics. She pretty. They did a good job with this. No more boring what you've come to expect from a pen black spinning reel. You have the black, gold, and silver versus the silver. We're not going to really say much about the blue because that disappears the second you put line on it. I would love to see a spin fisher done in that same motif or a slammer even. That'd be awesome. Slammer DX, spin fisher DX. I'm hoping to see a future of DX offerings from Penn. I don't even know what DX means. Does it mean, does X mean silver and D mean dark? I, I don't know. I just dig it. So, stuff on the side of the box. We, we're not going to go over it, but we'll just do a quick rundown of what, as far as what you get inside the box. You have spool shims. Spool shims are always good to keep. Never throw them away because you may find that you need them depending on what pound test you're using. If you start off using 20 pound braid and go up to 40, you may have to shim it because the diameter of the line, where it sits on that line roller, may cause it not to hit the top or bottom of the spool depending on the, the, the setup of, you know, out of the box from the reel. Then we have the schematic and uh, the instruction manual for reels. It's to uh, open it, read it, go catch a fish, okay? So we're good on that. That was the 4,000. And uh, I can assume the same in the 2,500. Smaller spool shims, good. Get that out of the way. So where do we begin? 
One of the things that surprised me is I read that they use a wave spring in their drag knob. I bet you didn't expect that I was going to start there. You probably thought I was going to start with handle knobs and ball bearings, eh? But this is pretty significant because a lot of guys complain about drags getting sticky or binding when they're fishing at heavier drag pressures. When you have a standard coil spring versus a wave spring, which is almost essentially a stack of Belleville washers, it gives you that extra fine tunability at the higher drag ranges and it can kind of ramp, ramp up your drag from zero to 60 a little bit quicker. Now, in a reel of this size and stature, I don't know if it's going to make that big of a difference because you're probably only going to be fishing this with 20 or 30 pound braid at the max. And this one, you're probably only going to be fishing up to eh, 40 pound braid. I say 30 pound because that's just a, a, a standard starting point for the majority of fishermen out there because you look at the package rating, it says six pound test diameter, yada, yada, yada. So a lot of guys just slap 30 on there and call it a day. And they could probably get away with using 10 or 15, depending on what knots they tie. But that's a different discussion altogether. So, when you look at these three here, you have the Fierce 3, Fierce 2, Battle 2. None of these incorporate that, including the Battle 3. So that's an upgrade. So you're going to get a little bit better uh, drag range. It's not really going to have too much of a... Uh, play too much of a role in how smooth it pays out line because theoretically you could just eliminate the drag uh, the, the, the spring up here and it'll just go from one pounds of drag to 30 pounds of drag and, and immediately because it's instantly engaging that drag versus the compression that's a little linear gives you a little bit you know wider range of, of drag pressure so with that being said let's go ahead take a look at the drags real quick I didn't know where I was going with this video. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison in this video. Uh, I think I will. Get that knob out of the way. And we'll take this off too, because I think we're going to find... Looking at that post down there. Yeah. If you look here. They retain very similar spool support. But back is that ball bearing that supports the base of the spool shaft that they took away on the standard Battle 3. It's back on the DX. Now we understand why they took it out. Just give you, uh, gives Penn a little uh, room to say we got more ball bearings and stuff. And they can say ball bearing supported drag. And not the biggest make or break if it doesn't have a ball bearing supported drag. What it does help is when the line is being pulled is the, 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 the bail arm, the roller, the line roller, is that perpendicular to the spool, comes up, the spool's always going to be kind of torqued this way, right? It's going to want to go like this. That kind of helps support the load when it's doing that. A bushing will do just fine, but when you don't have anything there, it's I'd consider that an upgrade. Could have been a bushing, could have been a bearing. I like to see it there. Bearings generally hold up better to, to higher heat. And if you get a smoker, you guys down in Florida, you guys don't know what you're going to hook into on any given cast. That's a nice little touch. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek at the drag stacks. We're assuming they're vegan. But you never know these days. Carbon fiber. I say carbon fiber because most drag ratings are lies. We stop testing drags. Because we break things when we do that. Some of the reels that I <laughs> break, I actually kind of like. I don't want to break them. All right, so they have their carbon fiber HD100 drag washers. Great, excellent. Both class leading, I guess you can call it. Nobody's doing a top and bottom drag stack at 120 bucks. I don't think they're doing that until you get up to the, I don't know, Penn Slammer? Saragossa? Daiwa doesn't even do that. <laughs> so yeah let's go ahead now and take a peek under the hood this is the standard battle three and one of the biggest advantages to the pen battle series or pretty much any pen reel for that matter when you compare it to the the japanese branders 
your Daiwas, your Shimano's, all those kind of brands, is how easy it is to maintain these reels. Now, in yesteryear, it used to be that Shimano led the pack, along with Daiwa, we're talking about 15, 20 years ago, and they both had worm gear driven oscillation systems. And uh, it's been since then, since Daiwa did that, and with the exception of their long cast reels. But Shimano still does. Daiwa's perfected it. I think Daiwa makes the best locomotion level wind uh, or oscillation driven systems in, in any spinning reel at any price range. Saragossa caught up real quick with this iteration though. But Penn's not far behind. This new series of reels definitely step up in the uh, refinement category once they went from the cast zinc to machined aluminum. I first noticed that in the spin fisher. After it ran in, after about three or four trips, and you know, it had some good outings with some good fish, I, I started comparing its, its, its fluidity to that of the Stratic, which surprised me. And again, at that point in time, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of pen spinning reels. Never had an issue with their conventionals. They're bulletproof, just like everybody else's you know, mid-high end conventionals. Do an excellent job. 525 Mag was my first pen conventional that I really loved. I, you know, I have some Senators, I've had Squitters, I've had Jigmasters, all that kind of stuff. And well, I don't really fish them that much because I prefer some of the more modern reels. You know, they're still very, very fish worthy. So when I was first fishing that spin fisher, um, I went in thinking that they were going to be nothing special. You know what I mean? Just a, a name plate that's been around for so many years. I could have been more wrong. My initial perception before I even fished them was off. And I like that. I like being proven wrong by some of these manufacturers. Because make, make no mistake, these companies are out there to make money. You know, so they may or may not cut corners in certain areas to maximize profit. And, uh, wow, she purdy. Doesn't that look great? And it's, it's worth noting that when I get up in the morning and I fire up my bench and start doing teardowns, I put my pants on one leg at a time. Difference being, I make gold records. Ain't that purdy? I'm not used to seeing that in this size reel. Now I gotta take a look at the 2500. We are definitely testing out the clear coat that we put on this bench not more than two days ago. <laughs> I engineered a backstop into my, my filming rig. There's no way I could lose a part at all whatsoever. Unless it hits it with such force it bounces back and goes past me. But we still got reflexes like a cat. So I think we can make the dig on it if it comes at us. And you guys remember when I was doing a tear down and a spring shot out and it bounced off of three walls and landed an inch from where <laughs> it was. It went pew, 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 and it's landed like pew. Right there. And then the other time, one just shot off and hit me in the teeth, and I caught it in my mouth. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's cool. That is sweet. I like seeing that. And not much uh, resistance of that shaft screw. Not the end of the world. I just, whenever I see screws come out that easy, and I know I'm not talking side plate screws, I do get a little concerned because of, you know, you're running in the boat, there's vibration. A lot of things go, uh, go wonky when you introduce high frequency vibration or mid level frequencies. When you have the droning of the engine and it goes up into the gunnel rod holders and your transom rod holders and the rocket launcher, especially because all that just you know, transfers to through the, the welds of the T-top. 
Look at that. They did an excellent job. That's beautiful. Are you guys seeing that? That's pretty sweet. That's one of the prettiest main gears I've ever seen in a real size. It, and again, it's it's <laughs> main gears aren't a beauty contest, so let me make that perfectly clear. It's not like there's a beauty pageant and main gears are just walking down a catwalk. You know what I mean? It, it's not how it works. But what I can say is, you know, taking a look at my, my Stella's Certates exists. Yeah, they're pretty. They look nice, but this looks like jewelry. This looks like more more so jewelry more so than the, the Daiwa main gears. Look at that. That are machined from aluminum and hard anodized. I dig it. That's awesome. Pen, pens really make it a good product these days. Now, I haven't fished the DX. This is the first time I've ever seen one in person. I've heard some good things, but what I'm mainly hearing is from, you know, J&H and, you know, how they're selling and he hasn't had any issues. A couple of, I've gotten some DMs through Instagram with guys saying that when they turn the handle, they hear like a ch -ch 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 -ch. and I instruct them to just take off the side plate, pull the shaft, take the rotor off to probably see the kick lever of the, uh, the rotor. See how it hits that trip ramp like that? I've seen some issues where they hang, whether it was improperly assembled, where they just the, the lever just hangs down and it's not under spring tension. It goes. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, I've I've also seen reels that had the the pinion or the rotor retaining nut tighten too much and it crunches bearings. So you got to be a little bit careful when you take apart these. You don't want to over tighten that pinion. Uh, the design can do a little bit of damage. So we are looking at an aluminum framed. Graphite rotor, very stiff too. That's a lot of pressure. I'm gonna pull a hammy. Machine brass main gear. All bearings are double sealed. These aren't shielded, they're sealed. Which, they're not perfect, but since the reel itself isn't technically a, a, a sealed to a, a vacuum, when the shaft goes up and down, the water that's sitting on these shields isn't going to pull that water in, which I believe, this is just a theory, I believe that's one of the reasons why that I'm seeing some of these pinion bearings in the spin fisher have some issues in terms of salt water intrusion. Because you have this side here sealed, you have the body completely sealed, you have a mid, I'll, I'll take the handle off so you can see, a middle of the road, although very, very effective and proven to be waterproof, seal on the axle of the main gear. You can see that reddish color. So you have effective seals all throughout, in addition to a seal at the main shaft. right there with the only physical seal at the top of the AR clutch you know what uh, can we even get there yeah we can get there I'll show you don't talk about it be about it and what happens from hot and cold and the shaft acting as a piston as it goes in and out When the shaft goes outward, you can't tell me that there's not a level of, would it be negative pressure? That would then, in a sense, pull water that may be standing down in past the seal of the pinion bearing which is theoretically, and as far as I can tell, the last stand in terms of sealing. To keep water from getting into the body of the reel. It's great for splashes. 
But if you look here, so that root, that rotor, that rotor, that rotor, see that bushing down there? That bushing sits on the inner race of that bearing. So it, when you tighten that rotor up, it does a good job of keeping water, assuming it binds correctly and evenly and you don't reinstall it with some grit in there that could create a gap. It does a good job there, but that outer edge that, of the inner race of the bearing that runs along that bearing seal and the outside edge of the, or the inside edge of the outer race, I can't really tell how effective that seal is. Is that the weak link? So water will get down in there despite this hydrophobic coating that will repel water. And it almost relies on centrifugal force as the rotor spinning to have the water beat up and kind of shed outward to get out of this area. But it, a sense, in a sense, almost acts as a cup. And I've experienced it. I have friends that have experienced it. And it's that bearing that goes on these reels. Is it difficult to get to and replace and fix? No. You saw how quickly and easy it was to get in here. All you got to do is take out three more screws and pop. It's good. So back to the point that I was trying to make before I got sidetracked, just like I always do. And you guys like it when I get sidetracked. You guys also like it when I bash products. I don't like bashing products. It's not fun. And in the back of my head as I'm doing this, I am dreading, <laughs> I'm dreading the video that I'm going to be filming over the weekend, which is the new Visser. So again, you have a, again, you have a seal here that goes around here. Does a pretty good job keeping water out, but it's this bearing, that bearing right there. I wish they did something a little bit better there, a little bit better. And then it would have been on the level of the Saragossa in terms of how tightly sealed and impenetrable the seal at the, the pinion bearing and clutch is. And again, I'm seeing issues with the bearing. I'm not seeing issues with the internals. So, yeah. So when this shaft goes in and out and you have this seal here, is this seal tighter than this area here causing it to pull water? I don't know. I don't know. That's the only thing I can come up with because it's not one or two times that I've seen it. So, yeah. Now back to these guys. Since they don't have those additional seals all over the place, there really isn't any pressure buildup with that shaft coming in and out to pull water in. So I often see that the bearings in these reels don't often fail. You'll see bearings and, and corrosion buildup at the shaft on the handle entry points that you can't pull the bearing off. You'll see line rollers go. They have a sealed bearing in the line roller too. And, uh, yeah, it, it's almost like uh, the solution caused a problem. You know what I mean? And it's not a solution to, you know, it's not making a solution or in intentionally creating a problem. I don't know where I'm going with this. There's a phrase. I don't remember it. But there is a legitimate problem that Penn attempted to create a solution for. And at the same time, may have created a little bit of a, uh, an issue in the process. And nobody's saying these, these reels are supposed to be, you know, you know, when you're swimming to a rock, climbing out in Montauk, all that kind of jazz. That's not what I'm saying. Even splashes with the water collecting down there seems to be enough to get by. And we'll go one step further. Take a look-see. This is so cool. A little tiny brass geared freshwater sized even spinner. Cool. We've seen it before. Nothing out of the blue. Very good protection up around this area. That top plate does a mediocre job of 
keeping contaminants out. Um, comparing it to, say, a Daiwa BG that has a, a, a nested plastic cap, essentially serving as the same function. Call it a tie there. I do like the, the seal ball bearings. And the bearings from Penn are really cheap. So if you do need replacements, you can replace into all the reels, all the reels, all the bearings in your reel for just a couple bucks. And Penn's pretty good about it too. So if you have a modern pen and you have bearing issues, just reach out to them. Chances are they'll, they'll, they'll send out some from, from my experiences and what I've seen from others. So uh, yeah, I guess that's with all that being said, this was a quick first look at these DXs in comparison to the Spin Fisher and the Battle 3, the standard version. And I can honestly say, if your Battle 2 is on its last legs, if your if you're Fierce 2 is on, on its last legs, or if you want to upgrade to your Fierce or your Battle 2, just going by my personal experiences on the Battle 2 over time and seeing that they made some improvements that have been effective and mirror other standard features on the on the battle too and even though i haven't put time on it i have put time on brass geared pens in their spinning reels i can't see this being a home run i, I really can't i don't like making judgment calls saying go out and buy it if i haven't fished it but i fished the spin fisher i fished the slammer i fished the Battle 3, I fished the Fierce 3. And I fished the older versions, which I wasn't a fan of, and I was immediately uh, taken aback at how good these new battles and spin fishers and all these other reels were, that this slides in nicely. I would say, hey, if, you're, if your $120 reel is in your budget, I'd say jump on it. Jump on it. Jump on it. In terms of a 25 or a 2000 size reel, it does have some weight to it. It's not a super finesse reel. Might be considered finesse for salt water, but for fresh water, that's on you. There is quite a bit of weight, uh, a weight penalty in terms of the brass gear. Now, this is pretty cool. So, this is the battle main gear. This is the. Uh, Wait, this is the Spin Fisher main gear. Wait. <laughs> we are doing so well. So, so well. Okay, yeah, this is the Battle 3 main gear. We're going to get an accurate weight on it. Give me one second. Ow! Just dropped the wrench on our foot. Let's just see how... Our scale works because we dropped we dropped the twin power on it and it shattered the lid off. <laughs> We're about a thousand today, guys. Twenty one point six grams. Ooh, twice. Two times. That's some gravity. So that's a significant difference. But in the grand scheme of things, is thirteen grams gonna make or break a written? No. No. Unless you're really going for that ultimate, ultimate you know, tip up sensitivity with no weight at all in the entire rod and it's decked out with the high end components is a half an ounce in the spinning reel going to make that big of a difference. So, eh. but when you compare it to the likes of like a, a Vanford Stratic CI4 Ballistic Tatula that are those, those ultra light, you know, or an Exist or the magnesium frames, you know, high end reels. You're, you're not talking a half an ounce, you're talking four ounces, right? You're talking about reels that weigh five, five and a half, six ounces. And yeah, that's that's almost half the weight. If you're into that sort of thing, you're not going to even be looking at this reel to begin with. Um, so that's kind of moot at that point. But yeah, if, if, if you're looking for a kick around, hard use reel, as long as you treat it well, I mean, you saw how easy it is to get in there. 
And, and you know, this is not what I would consider a, a $100 throwaway reel, which the industry in that $79 to $120 range is polluted with throwaways. Uh, the, the, the offerings from Penn from the Fierce on up, I can't, you know, I can't really say anything bad about them. They last, they're easy to use, they're easy to service, and they, 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 they perform trouble free, which is uh, what more can you ask for? So, with all that being said, I had to reach all the way out because I'm sitting six feet back from my bench and I'm, staying, I'm not even sitting anymore. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know down below what your thoughts are. And until next time, tight lines, and I'll see you soon. Just wanted to point this out. It looks to me that the 4500 and 2500 main gears of the brass variety are interchangeable. That's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting there to be a world of difference, but it's nice to see that you can they're actually using the same size main gear in the 2500. Now, the physical size and stature of the gear in a 12 ounce reel of this main gear isn't all that impressive when you compare it again to some of the monstrous gears that you find in the, the Daiwa reels. But it is kind of cool to see it in a little 2500 reel. I'm impressed by that little guy. I'm, I definitely am. And it's got a big chunky handle knob. I don't know if you guys uh, saw that early on, but when you compare it to a Shimano handle knob or the aftermarket, which is the same size. It's what I just grabbed. It's the closest thing I had. It's significantly larger. So, if you want to really go Donkey Kong mode on it and start winching, I mean, the clutch might not hold up, but the main gear should be without a problem. But, okay, enough. Oh, and because, uh, why not? Oh, this I, I sense a giveaway coming up. Oh, do I? Boy, howdy. We're going to make Franken reels out of these bad boys. We got the brass and the standard. <gasps> Whoops. <laughs> we got a little excited. Uh, the oscillation gear just or the oscillation slider just uh, bound up <laughs> whoopsie we got excited That's pretty cool What are we doing? Do we even have a clue today? <laughs> I rest my case. All right, we're going to do that another day. It looks like it'll work fine. I'm going to, before I break anything, I'm going to go eat lunch. Later.